Digital Agent from Moses Group. And uh, welcome again to another hashtag uh, Ask Causes. Uh, I'll be answering most of your questions. If you've got any question in regards to uh, your visa matters, if you've got any question in regards to uh, any kind of skill assessments, or if you have any questions in regards to uh, points or something, you can uh, basically leave a comment uh, below. Uh, we have we are live on different platforms. Uh, we are doing live on TikTok as well. So if you want to share the links uh, to your family and friends, so they can also gain any kind of information in regards to their visa matters. So as we are progressing towards this session, guys, uh, you know, basically I would like to first of all drag your attention towards a visa which is 485 temporary graduate visa there are a couple of things uh, i would like to introduce to you guys that uh, you know uh, we have seen that people who are uh, you know focusing on lodging their 485 visas uh, you know are making a number of mistakes in submitting their 485 visa applications so i'll be slowly discussing about uh, those requirements uh, because we are seeing that people who are, uh, you know, submitting their 485 visa applications are getting their visa refused, or we have seen uh, people not getting, you know, uh, the lodgement correctly, and then they are facing frustration. So the number one thing, uh, guys, which I need to educate you is on your police checks. Now, uh, the police check which you guys are applying uh, must be your Australian federal police check, uh, you know, supported for immigration and citizenship purposes. So we are seeing, uh, you know, people might be making mistake in, in uh, submitting their police checks to the department. And, uh, you know, if your police check is not of a certain criteria or a proper criteria, you might not be uh, satisfying the character. So in that case, again, if the case officer, you know, is pretty stubborn, he might or she might end up uh, refusing your visa. But if, you know, we have seen mostly the uh, in those cases, case officers will give you chance to uh, provide you with the, uh, you know, that, okay, you can go ahead and submit the proper police check. So this is one thing. Uh, second crucial thing I would like to mention is we are seeing people, uh, you know, submitting their 485 visa applications, uh, not uh, in the proper stream. Now, this is pretty much, uh, we are seeing guys that, you know, people who are submitting uh, their 485 visa applications, we have seen candidate who have done masters, uh, or bachelors, or even if they have done a PhD, we have seen candidates, they have submitted uh, their 485 visa uh, application uh, for graduate work stream. So what is the difference? So basically difference there is guys that if you have, you know, submitted your application into the graduate work stream, even if you're eligible for five to six years of 485 visa duration, you will only get two years of TR. So basically, uh, you know, you will feel pretty stupid, you know, and frustrated at the same time that, okay, you know, I was eligible for six years of 485 visa. How come I've got only two years? Uh, the reason would be because you have gone ahead and submitted the application, uh, you know, onto uh, basically graduate work stream rather than post-study work stream. Uh, you know, guys, you are uh, asking a lot many questions on different kinds of platforms. I'll slowly, slowly get into the questions uh, while we are heading towards. Uh, first of all, thanks all people uh, who are joining this session. Uh, so let's take a couple of questions. Uh, Raj Karki is saying it's still possible to get invitation in Western Australia. See again, uh, you know, guys, uh, we, this is the first time I'll probably say, you know, it's happening that candidates, uh, not, not candidates, the states are, you know, not giving any kind of, uh, you know, updates. We have you know, send them emails and stuff. They're still waiting on the department to announce when to open up the states and, you know, introduce the new requirements or criteria if the candidates are looking forward to apply for, you know, 190 or 491. Uh, when it comes to Western Australia, uh, coming from the past experience, we have seen Western Australia have invited a lot many people, uh, you know, so I'll probably say there are chances. Uh, going on to whether those chances would be, you know, when that is the right time, so the time's gonna totally depend upon, uh, you know, people uh, when the state's gonna come up with the new requirements and the changes. So let's hope that, uh, you know, we will get the update soon from all the states, uh, you know, when it comes to 190 and 491, still, you know, department has not updated the states when to open up their requirements. So let's keep our fingers crossed, keep your, you know, documents and skill assessment and all those 
other informations handy. Uh, so if the states open up, uh, you know, there are chances you'll be invited. In regards to Western Australia, I should also mention that we have seen uh, the people who were pre-invited, uh, basically who were selected for the nomination applications, uh, have received emails. That state is still waiting for the allocation. You know, once the allocation have been made, uh, you know, then uh, they will be basically getting, uh, you know, invitations from the, uh, you know, the department which is to launch the visa. So, in regards to uh, when it comes to invitations from the state guys and the requirement from the state, we should understand that uh, people are still, uh, you know, sorry, the states are still waiting upon, uh, you know, uh, to open up uh, from the department. And uh, hopefully, department will, you know, start giving them all those directions to open up. And then we will hear the requirements and the, you know, news soon. Moving forward, again, most of the candidates are asking any state allocations are completed, not yet, you know. Uh, so Nisha is saying, I'm a recent graduate accountant from South Australia. Should I have to move to out region or else need to study telecommunication? See, if you, uh, Sunil, in your case, if you have studied uh, in South Australia, we have seen South Australia has been one of those states, uh, you know, who have been pretty, uh, you know, helpful for the international graduates when it comes to inviting candidates uh, for 190 or 491. So I'll probably say, uh, let's wait uh, for the state to open up properly once they open up. Then we will go on to start discussing about whether we should move to Router Regional South Australia or not. Uh, but again, guys, you know, if you're in South, uh, South Australia, we have seen uh, the candidates who have been working in their nominated occupations had, uh, you know, great chances of getting 190. And people who were not working in their nominated occupations were still, you know, eligible for 491. So it's one of those, uh, you know, good states who like to invite people uh, when it comes to 190 and 491 invitations. Okay, moving on to next comment, we have got Venkatesh. Venkatesh is saying, hi, Kamal. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Venkatesh. I'm currently living in Sydney. I have 85 points analyst programmer. Is there any chance for me to get the invitation? See, your points are not too bad. Uh, but when it comes to IT sector, we have seen uh, for 190, New South Wales always, uh, you know, expects uh, the candidates to be a cream profile. What I'm trying to say there is that they will be always expecting the candidates to be on 90 to 95 sort of points. So if you are able to, uh, you know, uh, see those points coming up a little bit in your situation, uh, I'll probably suggest you to do so. Uh, Garima is saying, uh, will we have 189 round soon? I'll probably say so. Uh, Garima, the last invitation round was done in May. So we haven't seen anything in June. We haven't seen anything in July. Now we are already heading towards mid-August. So we might be expecting at least one invitation round this financial year. Now, going back to the last data, guys, when it comes to uh, you know 189 round invitation, we are not talking about the last year. Uh, what I'm discussing here is about uh, the one which was given in May was uh, having 7,000 applicants, uh, applicants being invited, but most were all related to health sector. So again, if you are in a health sector, we might expect another round, or if we see that you know department has been allocated more seats and they have got a big heart what they did last time, we might have even you know huge number of invitations coming soon. So just make sure, guys, you know uh, your points are up to date, your documents are valid, nothing is expired, you know, uh, so that the time is not wasted in lodging your visas. Vikram is saying any chance uh, for 190 New South Wales 60 plus points civil engineering draft person working similar field regional council. See with 190, uh, Vikram, I'll probably say your points are pretty less. You know, I'll probably advise you. To increase your points a little bit because we have seen uh, when it comes to uh, you know 190 for New South Wales, uh, you know candidates uh, they are very pretty strict. You know when it comes to new, uh, 190, they always pick up the cream profile. You know anything above 80, 85, 90, you know mark they like those type of people. So I'll probably advise you uh, to go ahead and make sure uh, that you know you start increasing your points when it comes to 190 New South Wales. Komal is saying, if I move state in 190, will it affect my citizenship or not? Citizenship eligibility criteria, Komal is totally focused upon a uh, number of years you've spent in Australia. So that means if you have been living in Australia for four years and one year on permanent resident visa, that's all the criteria you need to meet. Sura Singh is saying, I have skill assessment of auditors and accountant, Victoria, 70 points. What are my chances? Both occupations are nice, Suraj, but when it comes to invitations, we have seen, uh, you know, that... Accountants have also been invited by Victoria, but considering the points, it was 85. 
So I'll probably advise you that, you know, your points being upon 70, 491 would be the chances uh, to get invited from Victoria because Victoria is those kind of a state that uh, who have more focus upon health sector. They have more focused uh, upon, you know, teaching, social work and all those kind of occupations. So first of all, guys, you know, thank you for uh, joining. You're sending me heaps comments. I'll try my very best to slowly answer all those comments. Uh, while we are doing this session, uh, let me introduce that we haven't seen any, uh, you know, uh, requirements from Victoria being updated yet. We are still uh, waiting from the department uh, to allocate uh, the requirements or criteria to the states. Uh, this session is all about just a basic discussion about you know your particular case. If you need any questions to be answered, uh, I'm happy to answer those kind of questions. Honey Deep is saying, what about first class builder in Victoria? See, honey, uh, when it comes to trained occupations in Victoria, we have seen that the occupations uh, for trade have been invited only for 491. And uh, most of the occupations were related to hospitality, like chef or cook. Uh, in regards to your occupation, I'll probably say, if you have completed your job ready program, South Australia would be one of those best states, uh, you know, where if you are meeting the work criteria, you might be eligible for 190 or 491. But again, let's wait until the states open up. Mr. Thapa is saying, if we have two years and 10 months of work experience as a chef and a valid skill assessment, is 186 possible? For 186, Mr. Thapa, you must have three years of work experience at the time of lodgement. So in your case, I'll probably advise you to complete two more months. Three years of full-time work experience or equivalent is required for 186. That must be before you are lodging the visa, not like 482. In 482, even if you are lacking some kind of work experience, it's at the time of the grant, hopefully, your question has been answered. That means you must do at least two year, two months more to meet that three years of criteria and then only lodge. See, in your case, what you can do is you can lodge at least uh, 186 and then you know start discussing uh, about uh, uh, you know visa application. Just lodge the nomination application first. All right. Honey, what am I saying? Tourist visa is coming nowadays. Yes, honey, we are seeing tourist visa are coming, but yeah, again, refusal rates are also you know equivalent to the grant rates. So if you are planning, make sure your uh, GTE criteria is met, means you must try to satisfy, satisfy the department that you have strong ties back home in your, uh, in your home country and that you will be returning back uh, to your home country after your temporary visit to Australia. <clears throat> Venkatesh is saying, for my wife, I have submitted a UI with 65 plus five for information on organized professional one night news of Sydney, chance of getting invitation. Again, your points are less Venkatesh. Because Sydney has been one of those states uh, from so many years, they're always trying to focus uh, people, uh, you know, who are having uh, higher points. So trying to increase your points and uh, then we go from there. Then second one we have got is Simran Ashley. Uh, higher for marketing specialists, what are the chances to get 190? Simran, if your uh, points are good and you are a skilled candidate, we are seeing uh, you know, states love to invite candidates who are coming up with a skilled work experience uh, candidate. So I'll probably say, you know, there are chances for this particular occupation as well. What are the so scope of offshore engineer candidates for 75 points? See, Mayank, we had seen Victoria giving invitation uh, to engineers uh, from outside Australia, especially who were having like five to seven years of work experience. So if you are that type of a candidate, I'll probably say, you know, there are chances that you uh, would be uh, getting the invitation soon. Uh, again, guys, if you are watching this uh, live on Facebook, live on TikTok, please uh, do share and like this page. You know, we are doing all these live sessions just to uh, provide information to our international students uh, who are struggling with their uh, visa pathways. And hopefully this information would be handy for you guys to get permanent in Australia. Moving forward, uh, unknown user is saying, uh, Paji, if medical is expired at the time of grant, do they ask again for medical or not? It or it depends. Yes, it's totally up to the case officer. If you've already done the health examination, uh, you know, if there is nothing, uh, you know, suspicious to case officer uh, for the medical examination, then they would not require you to undergo health examination. Simran. Uh, you have again asked the same question. There are, as I've mentioned you, there are chances for the offshore candidates as well. Again, guys, if you are watching this live session from outside Australia, I'll probably uh, tell you that, uh, you know, these, uh, these state have, you know, invited candidates from offshore who were having, uh, 
uh, you know, highly skilled uh, employment. So let's say, for example, when it comes to engineering uh, sectors, we have seen uh, Victoria inviting candidates uh, who were holding uh, experience like five to seven years of work experience. So yes, I'm talking about 190. So there are chances, you know. Okay, then we've got Teddy saying, I'm currently holding 485 expiring in March, covered uni, met uni in Metro Melbourne, bachelor's eligible qualification, apply for extension, which one in AME account should I select, apply post-study stream, replacement, you are not, uh, post-study work stream is, so replacement stream is not the one for you. It's basically, uh, you know, we are going for an extension, so it's gonna be a, a new application for, uh, for post-study work stream. Jatin Patel is saying telecommunication network planner with 65 points in 189. See Jatin, when it comes to 189, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, candidates that uh, in May round, only health sector occupations, audiologists, chiropractors, you know, uh, all those kind of health sector, uh, you know, occupation, neurosurgeons, et cetera, were invited. So I, I'm, I'll doubt that if there is that again, uh, you know, a small amount of uh, invitation given by the department that this particular occupation will be selected. But again, if you can try and increase your points and look for 190 and 491 option as well. So guys, again, uh, please do accept my apologies if I'm not able to answer all these questions while we are doing this session, especially for 485 I was discussing. Uh, let me introduce uh, one critical mistake people are doing is uh, applying for a wrong stream of 485 visa, especially for the candidates who have completed bachelor's, master's or highest sort of qualification. We are seeing, uh, you know, they have lodged the application in wrong stream. Uh, the visa has been granted. What does that mean? Now they only have two years of visa instead of, uh, you know, five years or six years. So when you are doing all these kind of, you know, visa things, it's always good that you try not, uh, you know, uh, basically meet a registered migration agent, have a discussion with them, and then, you know, decide upon what to do. Let's move on forward. How long is the waiting period for 189 grant? Uh, when it comes to 189 grant, guys, uh, especially uh, um, we are talking about people who have applied for 189. Uh, we are seeing that the 189 uh, visa applications uh, are taking around about uh, nine to 12 months. Uh, again, you know, in that time period, we are still watching that uh, candidate who are into health sector uh, are being invited, you know, pretty quick, not invited, are given the PR uh, pretty quick, rather than if your occupation is not in the health sector, then we have to uh, basically, you know, wait that time period. All right. So when it comes to, you know, invitations from any kind of state, guys, we, we must understand that, you know, if you are having stronger points, there are more chances. If you are having less points, there are less chances. So if you believe uh, that, okay, you know, I've got, you know, less points, start focusing on 491 visa instead of getting greeting and focusing on 189 and 190. So again, uh, none of the state guys have, uh, you know, started inviting candidates, most of them, what we are referring here is to Western Australia, you know, New South Wales, uh, Victoria as well. So if you are that type of a candidate that you have submitted your ROIs, now what happened in uh, uh, previous years was guys, you know, like let's talk about 2021-22. Uh, we used to submit ROIs. If the ROIs were selected, it's all good. If not, they will just refuse all the ROIs and then ask us to lodge us again. But in, the, uh, in uh, this year, they never did something like that. So we are assuming, you know, that they will be considering the, all the ROIs uh, from, uh, you know, backhand and try to consider the similar criteria in future as well. If not, we might see another things, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, again, resubmitting your ROIs. All right, Rehan is saying, I've done motor mechanic, I've got 70 points, what are the possible to get the invitations? See, uh, we had seen, invitations for 189 that was in last year invitation round but again if you're focusing on state sponsor uh, be assured that you know you must always weigh up what kind of state you are living in because uh, if you're focusing about victoria i'll probably say there are very minimum chances uh, if you're focusing on western australia south australia i'll probably say there are chances uh unknown user is saying when your one co is cancelled and you do not have a second COE, what is the duration? 
See, uh, when it comes to compliance, guys, uh, especially uh, in regards to your COE is being cancelled or, you know, if you are getting any kind of emails from uh, your educational institutes, uh, try to uh, solve these matters ASAP. Uh, why we are saying this is because uh, there is uh, basically, uh, you know, information uh, which institute has to share with the Department of Home Affairs if the, uh, if the candidate is not abiding by the visa condition. So what does that mean is if your COE get canceled, you know, that information will be shared uh, with the Department of Home Affairs uh, that might again end up, you know, our visa being canceled if you are not maintaining the, uh, you know, COEs. So I'll probably say, uh, you know, I'm not sure this who this user is. If your COE has been canceled, try to visit, uh, you know, our nearest office and try to get your COEs. And there must be some kind of a reason why COE was canceled. Try to resolve this issue with your college if possible. If not, try and at least get one of the CEOs to maintain the visa conditions for yourself. Uh, we've got another candidate saying, is there any re legislation released for the reduced pathway? To we are still waiting upon that. We are expecting to happen that. So, uh, so again, when it comes to, uh, you know, criteria being or regulation being set, uh, what the minister of, uh, uh, you know, our Department of Home Affairs made an announce, announcement. There's going to be change in point systems. You know, it's going to be change in student visa criteria. We are expecting the same to happen up. Uh, you know, that's why maybe they might be taking long. So who knows what we are waiting upon. But it seems like there might be some kind of big changes coming from the department when it especially comes to the point system. Could you advise for 80 points for 491 South Australia region? Yes, though your points are pretty nice, but when it comes to South Australia, guys, we must understand that, uh, you know, that when it comes to those states, they more focus on their own requirement. So like work experience and all those kind of things. So make sure if you are uh, meeting that criteria, you know, then there will be possibilities of getting the invitation. I've got one of the TikTok users who have requested me to uh, ask them. Answer the question. It says RM Nursing New South Wales 189 for 75 points, 198. Any chance when round will happen for? See, yeah, if you're in New South Wales, uh, you know, I'll probably say those points are still not too bad. Uh, when it comes to your nursing occupations, I'll probably say higher chances are you will be invited for 189. So just maybe, uh, you know, stick with your points and wait until the next uh, invitation round occurs for especially 189. Uh, the other candidate is saying, I'm waiting for 189 chef from December. It has been eight months and he updated on 189 grants. We are seeing it in 189 grants, but when it comes to trade occupation, guys, uh, it's not that huge kind of invitations being given, not invitations, visa grants given by, uh, you know, department apart from health sector, social workers, teachers, and we are seeing ICT business analysts, uh, you know, and other IT occupations uh, being given the grant as well. Okay. Or I was saying, uh, good evening, sir. What are the chances of ECT at 75, 75 points onshore, onshore applicant? See again, your points are not too bad. Anything above, you know, 75, 80, 85, 90 uh, comes into good sort of a scale. Uh, but again, if you're focusing on 189, 190 or 491, uh, just keep that thing in mind, guys, that, you know, it's always the state criteria. So states, will be inviting you guys. So make sure that you are following, uh, you know, the requirements of the state. Just submitting the EUI sometimes doesn't really help, helps if you are not meeting the criteria or the requirement of the states. I hope that's, un that's understood. So yes. So guys, again, uh, if you are sitting in any of the state in Australia, you know, trying to just hold tight, we might see updates coming soon. Okay, uh, we might see changes coming soon. We might see uh, requirements coming soon uh, for all the states. So at the, at the moment, I'll probably say, yeah, stick with your own state, wherever you are sitting upon, uh, because, you know, sometimes we have seen people will pack up their bags, go to some other state, and then that particular other state uh, where they were previously residing will start inviting the candidates. Okay, so if you are that type of a candidate who are already, uh, you know, who have achieved the skill assessment and just are waiting, for the state to open up, just wait a little, wait a little bit, and hopefully, you know, we'll have the state requirements and procedures, uh, you know, coming upon soon. So again, if you guys are watching this 
uh, live on uh, TikTok, Facebook. Just please share and like this video uh, so that when next time we are doing live sessions, especially for you know these visa matters or any kind of updates, uh, you'll get the notification. Uh, thanks for your questions as well, guys. You are you know sending huge amount of questions. Uh, while we are heading towards all other questions, I just want to uh, you know introduce one of the issues which we are seeing uh, you know nowadays the candidates are facing uh, in our community is character issues. So guys, when uh, you know we are lodging any kind of visas, especially when it comes to 189, 190, any permanent visas or partner visas, we must understand that department is pretty strict when it comes to character grounds. Mm -hmm. So if you are not able to pass the character test, there are high chances of visa being refused. Uh, so we have seen, you know, nowadays a lot of domestic violences, you know, a lot of other physical violence are taking place. You know, we are always meeting all different sort of clients who have uh, been involved into this or who are victimized by this. So trying to make sure, guys, that we are not, you know, participating in any kind of these uh, issues where we believe uh, that, you know, our corrective backgrounds uh, will be compromised and that that might end up you know, our visa being refused. So department is pretty strict on these things. Uh, when it comes to visa, when it comes to, uh, you know, citizenship applications as well. So just make sure guys that, uh, you know, we are not basically doing anything stupid uh, to put a stake on our visas. So it's pretty uh, handy to keep our, you know, corrected grounds clean. Moving on to our comments, uh, Rohan is saying, I've applied for 189 visa in June, registered nurse with 65 points. When can I expect my visa, sir? So Rohan, I'll probably, uh, as per the department's website, the duration is nine months, but uh, as per our clients uh, who were in your similar occupations have been uh, given the grant, uh, we can say probably four months. So if your application is ready to submit application, there are high chances that you will be receiving your outcome within three to four months. You can just make sure your police checks and all those documents are up to date. 65 points in Western Australia as a chef, any chance in 190. Uh, when it comes to Western Australia, guys, uh, you know, they had set up a requirement. Uh, if you are not graduate of Western Australia, they required of a letter, uh, six months of work experiences. Uh, from Western Australia, but again, those were uh, you know requirements set prior to this financial year. So this is new financial year, guys. Let's wait upon you know how they're gonna come up uh, with the new requirement, and then we go from there. All right. Uh, Dhrumil is saying, which course is better for someone who has done BA, B. Ed, and teaching English here in India for getting PR in future? See, when it comes to getting permanent residency, uh, Dhrumil, we have to focus on an occupation first. Uh, I'll probably say teaching would be one of them because the candidate is coming up with a nice background of teaching itself. And uh, he or she might be possessing a good uh, sort of English, uh, you know, when it comes to level of English. So in that case, I'll probably say teaching would be one of them. Teddy is saying, is AFP police check certificate required prior to 485 extension. Yes, it is required, uh, you know, any kind of 485 visa guys when we are lodging, uh, AF police, AFP police check is required. So make sure guys, you are submitting that, uh, you know, when we are doing the visa applications for 485. Subclass, Supreet is saying subclass 309 was applied. She is on 600 now onshore and pregnant. If 309 does not open, what can we do? See, uh, Supreet, there is a way out of it. I'm not sure who applied your 309 visa. So if you believe that you are stuck in a situation, now when we are saying she's pregnant, you know, I'll probably say the duration of pregnancy, whether she's allowed to travel outside Australia or not, uh, is the question itself. So there is a way out. It's nothing to worry about, first of all. You know, so I'll probably advise you that if you can contact myself, you know, so that we can come up with the situation where she does not have to leave, uh, you know, Australia. Sidhu is saying, what, what about TR processes time nowadays? Uh, when TR processes 
time in the Gasu extension, we are seeing the new extensions, uh, you know, which were lodged when this new extension thing was introduced. We haven't seen any grants yet. But apart from that, we are seeing like two to four months is the TI processing time period. Again, uh, for the best situation, is always uh, advised to recommend to a department's website. Sadi Singh's 85 points external auditor. What are the chances when it comes to those occupations? Uh, you know, if there is not a big, huge number of, uh, you know, invitation given by the department, then you are left with less chances when it comes to uh, those kind of points. How many points needed for accountant in New South Wales for 190? Uh, again, Rupal, one, and, uh, New South Wales has been one of those states who have always focused upon picking up the cream applications. What do I mean by that is they will always focus upon, uh, you know, candidates uh, who are sitting on, you know, highest points. So something like 90 to 95 would be a good score. Uh, Noel is saying, hey, bro, am I eligible for PR if my employer put me on full time but a print is carpenter. See, if you are an international student, first of all, you can't do apprenticeship. Uh, so basically, uh, as long as you are completing the duties of carpenter, uh, it should be fine. It means skilled, skilled duties. 80 points in recruitment concerned occupation, EY field for 491 New South Wales. Again, uh, Pratiksha New South Wales, sorry, South Australia has been one of those states who you know love to invite candidates for 491. So again, the requirements we are still waiting upon when they're gonna open up and let's see how it's gonna go. All right, uh, we have got Gursevak Singh saying, uh, Sergi, next invitation round, any lead 189 Victoria C. Again, as an RN, there are chances, Gursevak, that uh, we might be seeing invitations coming soon. So if you are a registered nurse, I'll probably say try and get all your other documents like PCC, AFP ready because if the invitation round, uh, invitation round happens, because the last invitation round which happened was in May, this financial year we haven't seen any invitation round. So if it occurs, you know, in coming couple of months, there I'll probably advise you to uh, you know uh, submit a ready to submit application. Means you know none of the document must be pending. Uh, so okay, saying sir, today I got refusal, and what do I do? I will apply AT, and what is the processing time? So uh, if the visa refusal is upon, uh, you know, GTE criteria, let's say, for example, you came here on a visa visa and, uh, you know, you applied for uh, basically student visa and your student visa has been refused. So I'll probably advise you to still maintain your, uh, you know, studies because that is the only way where you can prove your, uh, you know, continuing studies. And uh, when it comes to uh, AT, AT is probably uh, probably taking one year, uh, you know, uh, to open up your application. So AT is taking around one year, uh, so to open up your, uh, you know, refusal applications. But make sure you are studying, paying your fees, and maintaining all those visa conditions. Uh, again, you will have no work rights, so you can't work. All right. Uh, so, Pariti saying, Paji, please explain a little bit what is the way out so she can deliver baby in Australia. Uh, so, Pariti, uh, information is pretty personal. I'll probably advise you. You can WhatsApp me on 04103 uh, You know, is should be should be all good, my. Okay. Pratibimba saying, charges for 194 EN Saji. Uh, Pratibimba, again, if you're in Victoria, there are high chances. But again, when the Victoria is going to open up, we are not sure yet. Uh, you know, Victoria has mentioned that we are all good to go, but we are waiting for the department to give us the, you know, green flag to go on to uh, opening up the state. So let's say, uh, you know, in maybe coming, see, I, I don't know why they have taken the whole month. What we might be assuming is that there might be a change in point system, uh, you know, as it was mentioned by the uh, minister. So let's go from there and see you know, if there are any changes coming upon when it comes to point system, or else I'll probably say your occupation itself has got high chances of getting the invitation for 190. Uh, Ajay Singh is saying, I did welder trade course. What is the chances for 190 in Victoria? Ajay Singh, if you have done the welding trade course, which is like uh, metal fabrication, I'll probably advise you to do your job ready program in South Australia, uh, where there are high chances 
uh, for 190, especially, uh, you know, in South Australia, if you can do your job ready program there, unless that if you believe you've got a good job in Victoria and your employer is happy to sponsor you, then you stick with Victoria because Victoria uh, has not invited any kind of trade occupations in the past, uh, you know, when it comes to 190. Uh, Dhrumil is saying, thank you for the answer. I have done bachelor's of electronic and communication. I'm working in IOS developer past seven years. My brother is permanent in Australia. If he sponsors me for family sponsor, is it guaranteed that I will uh, get the 491 visa? See, uh, first of all, uh, Dhrumil, when we are looking for 491 family sponsor visa, your family member must be living in regional. Uh, that means he can't be in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Uh, moving on to that okay is it guaranteed uh, that is a very wrong word because general skill migrations are totally relied upon uh, you know highest points you know a requirement of the states and all those kind of factors which uh, which will come in before a candidate is invited and then comes your other requirements of visa applications before a department will issue you with a visa so i hope uh, you know that answer your questions so there is nothing guaranteed as long as you are meeting the minimum eligibility criteria and you have been invited, there are chances. So can I apply for work rights? So see, you can apply for work rights, but there are high chances that your work rights will be refused because you arrived in Australia on a Vista visa, which had no work rights. And now when you are lodging your AET applications, okay, that uh, same condition stays upon uh, your bridging visas. Defender is saying, Pajian student visa, any chance for USA visa visa? Again, I'm not aware about USA, but we have heard that, you know, USA got, got a very longer wait for their interview. I don't know why is that. Maybe maybe because they have changed their, their migration policies or something. I don't know how, how things are going to go. Okay. So, yes, guys, while uh, we are having this discussion, uh, please do uh, like and share. Uh, if you're watching us on TikTok, you know, it's always good. If you are appreciating our good work, uh, we are always there to happy. Uh, we are always happy to support and uh, provide answers to your questions. Uh, myself, I'm Kamaljit Singh, a registered migration agent. Uh, we are trying our very best to answer each and every single candidate's question. Uh, we are live on different platforms, so different uh, different types of questions are being asked by different candidates. Uh, any question you believe uh, must be discussed. Uh, you know, in uh, private, I'll probably advise you to email me or uh, you can WhatsApp me on 0410355226. Mr. Jatt is saying, how long it will take after S57 request for 189 grant? Are you sure it was S57 or S56? Because S57 is a uh, natural justice, uh, there might be a concern which department has risen upon uh, when it comes to your visa applications. So yeah, it might take time if it's a S57 because department would be doing a lot many checks, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, what kind of documentations uh, you have provided. So it might be three months, it might be six months, we are not sure. Normally as S57 guys relies upon now where department has found out, you know, any information you have given in the visa application, uh, and any other information which they have received uh, from their own sources. So S57 is a not a good thing. Uh, but again, uh, you know, Mr. Jat, if you've responded to the S57, uh, just keep your things tight and whatever the issue was, try now. I hope that the issue was addressed in a proper manner and we might have a, you know, visa grant soon. Uh, Ajay is saying, I did welding trade course. What is my chance for 190 Victoria? Ajay, I've already mentioned that, you know, when it comes to Victoria, uh, they haven't invited candidates uh, for uh, 190 when it comes to trade occupations. So I'll probably advise you that if you are planning to do your job ready program, try not to do it some other state. All right. So moving on to guys, uh, you know, while we are having this live session, I would like to, uh, you know, educate you upon if your friends or family members are planning to lodge a 485 visa. We are seeing a lot many mistakes are being made uh, by candidates, uh, you know, while submitting these visa applications. We have seen candidates selecting a wrong stream and getting their visa durations to less uh, duration. Like, for example, you know, when it comes to you know, 49, sorry, not 491, 
when it comes to if a candidate has studied masters you know ended up lodging their uh, 485 visa application under graduate work stream uh, that means the candidate was given the visa of 2 years so that was pretty frustrating for the candidate so make sure guys when you are doing any kind of such visa processes uh, you know it's always good to have your uh, you know profile or have a discussion with the registration migration agent and hopefully you know so that in future we are not uh, getting frustrated or having any kind of income which we do not expect uh we have got one of the users is saying how much waiting time on 491 act place applications on marci act uh, you know is a nice state when it comes to the criteria if you are meeting the metrics uh, so there are chances but when it comes to time period i'll probably say it depends upon on how many invitations they are giving upon you know so going back on to uh, having a discussion about you know how many invitations they are giving upon then only we can see how much time they are taking upon on selecting 491 candidates so if you're asking about nomination uh, when it comes to visa if you've already lodged the visa for 491 uh, you know is a longer wait so make sure guys that you have submitted your applications yeah so you've requested for visa yeah for visa is nothing to do with the state it's more focused on uh, you know immigration so immigration is taking time for 491 guys so uh, we are expecting something more than 12 months uh, for 491 we are also seeing some visas you know being uh, granted in 2 months to 3 months so that means if your application is ready to submit when you are submitting your applications your police checks your form 80s and all those documents were good you know there are chances that your visa uh, will be granted soon if your application is lagging some information it will be causing delays in your applications so thanks brother uh, thanks for your uh, you know comments so yes uh, guys so this was it uh, from my side i hope uh, uh, you know i might have answered most of your questions uh, while leaving the session i would like to introduce uh not introduce educate you upon that we are still waiting upon the states to be opening up uh requirements i'll probably say uh, would be hopefully similar to what it was uh, in last year uh, you know we might be seeing uh, good changes being made up uh, for the candidates uh, who are living in those particular states uh in regards to moving to some other state i'll probably say it's not advisable at this particular stage because candidates uh, who have been in that particular state might have spent at least 3 to 6 months and might be already meeting the eligibility criteria if introduced in future uh, for the uh, residential purposes so try to stick with your state at the moment and uh, hopefully uh, you know states will open up with their requirements and uh, invitations uh, will be granted soon visas will be granted soon and hopefully every international student who dreams about getting permanent in australia would be receiving their permanent residency soon this is what we all hope guys and this is what we all registered migration agents are here to educate you upon and uh, apart from that you know it's friday evening spend time with your family members with your friends uh, enjoy your weekend and uh, make sure guys while i was doing this session i was i made a small discussion about character issues nowadays we are seeing uh, you know people uh, who have been uh, coming here on a temporary visas you know are not trying to follow Uh, the rules and regulations of the country uh, that will affect your visa applications in future if uh, those you know uh, particular policies are not followed when it comes to character requirements uh, again sometimes things do happen uh, you know unintentionally uh, that is totally unfortunate uh, but again don't try to participate or you know be part of any kind of that where you believe that character is- uh, character things could be compromised uh, in regards to 186 visas uh, now vvs i'll probably say uh, you know nomination itself is taking 12 months uh, so yes we are expecting around about after 12 months if the nomination is approved your visa if lodged uh, you know will be granted as well so that was it from my side guys hopefully if you are watching this if you were watching me on tiktok facebook instagram or all other social media do like and follow this page uh, we have different registered migration agents uh, who will be coming live Uh, you know on uh, every friday uh, following our you know hashtag ask us is any kind of question in regards to your visa matters educating you on to all the regulations and policies being introduced by department and uh, trying to uh, understand your case and providing your best possible answer
And that was it from my side. Uh, I'll probably see you next time again uh, in future. And then we go from there. Until then, you have a nice evening, guys. Good evening.